Hello everyone and welcome back and I'm Serge and I'm CERN and CERN we're going to be switching gears here now and we're going to be talking about PLUS scanning. What does that stand for? So PLUS is plural space and lung ultrasound and this really evolved from our original work with the extended fast exam that we saw in humans where they looked for pleural effusion and pericardial effusion and the later work by Dr. Lichtenstein that looked for lung pathology mm -hmm. through the blue protocol and we've sort of combined the two together because you can't really look at lung without looking at the pleural space and the pathologies are so closely intercorrelated that we termed it pleural space and lung ultrasound and we have a slightly different approach or method for doing this that we find works really well based on the teachings that we've done and some of the research that we've done as well. Yeah, that's very true, Dr. Boys. And now before we go too far, it is important to give some key concepts about PLUS scanning. Absolutely. So on the Clarius, for example, the settings that we use for the pleural space and lung ultrasound or for PLUS are different than the abdomen. So we do have a preset that's really nice on the Clarius that has the lung preset and that basically sets us up at six centimeters often the depth that we'll start with depending on body condition score of our patient and we also will then make any fine adjustments that we'll show you as we go along. Now Dr. Boysen it's really also important when we're doing the abdomen we have some natural boundaries we're not going to go beyond the subxiphoid or beyond the bladder caudally when it comes to plus scanning we have to think about our ultrasound boundaries what are they? Absolutely. So this is really easy when it comes to looking for boundaries. We use ultrasound to define those. So it's very difficult for us to know. We can't see through the dog and know where those boundaries are. I don't know exactly where lung is. It varies depending on how hard my patient's breathing and their anatomy mm -hmm. and their physiology. If they're breathing harder, the diaphragm can shift more if they're a bulldog versus a dog like Penny. So what we really need to do is we need to think about our boundaries. So this is the last rib back here. This is the front limb up here. We know that our lung, our caudal border of our lung is somewhere between these two boundaries. So we always start with the easiest boundary that is as far cranial as we can go with our ultrasound scanning. There's lung under the scapula and under the flexor muscles of the forelimb but we can't see that because we're limited by that scapula and those muscles of the forelimb. But that's our cranial border right here Dr. Shalhoub, a nice border for us to start with. And then Dr. Shalhoub, what other borders do we have? Well, we also have our dorsal border and you can't go beyond the apexal muscles, Dr. Boysen. So you've got the, a muscle layer over there. So using ultrasound, again, you can found this boundary because you're gonna go from lung, lung, lung to then muscle. So you know you're gonna be at the most dorsal, lung and pleural space boundary by finding that. Absolutely, and then the other one that we'll look for is that caudal border, and I don't know where that is. So I'm gonna use ultrasound to find that transition where we come off lung and we hit the soft tissues of the abdomen right where we're hitting that uh, costophrenic recess and the lung overlies the soft tissues of the abdomen. That's our caudal border, Dr. Shalhoub, and then we have so the caudal border is called the curtain sign, Dr. Boysen. We can't forget about that. It is a really unique thing. But Dr. Boysen, you didn't have to count ribs to find that? No, we're gonna use our ultrasound to tell us we're on lung and slide back until we see the soft tissues of the abdomen. So we'll actually demonstrate that as well. And then ventrally, we have two borders, Dr. Shalhoub. We have the ventral pleural border, or the most ventral we can go before we hit the sternal muscles. That is the ventral pleural border. If, however, we think about our patients, like we know in many of our uh, x-rays and when we're actually doing cardiology, there's a cardiac notch that sits in here. And when we have that cardiac notch, the lung doesn't come all the way down to the sternal borders, we're actually sitting over the heart itself. So we have a ventral lung border that includes the ventral regions of the lung that deviate dorsally at that cardiac notch, and then we have that ventral border where the sternal muscles are and those are our general borders. So why don't we actually put the probe on and show those borders and some of the tricks of ultrasound when we're scanning the chest. 100%. Now, key thing, team, is that you have to make sure you start over lung. That sounds really silly, but we have seen instances where you choose a random spot, you think it's gonna be thorax, and you're actually over abdomen. So use those boundaries we just talked about. If you start your scanning behind that cranial border, that forelimb, you're guaranteed to be over lung and not mistaken things for pathology that's not in the lung. Absolutely, so for example, if I palpate the subzipoid and I come straight dorsal here and I separate the fur and I take a look to see where I'm at, so I separate the fur, there's my subzipoid is sitting right here, I go straight dorsal and I put my probe there and we I take a look at what region we're at, and then I can see that in this situation, I come straight dorsal, I am actually sitting partly over the abdomen already. There's my last rib way back here. So this is actually sitting over the abdomen. And that's why we say, rather than guess to try and figure out where you're gonna end up if you come dorsal or just put the probe on, use your borders. So we're gonna start 
just caught to that front limb, separate the fur. I like to pull the skin forward when I do this and then separate the fur so that I don't have to put as much alcohol on my patient. Start with the probe perpendicular to the ribs with the marker towards the head. And when we do that, we get the classic bat sign, Dr. Shalhoub. Woo, Dr. Boys, and that bat sign is quite pretty. And that is identified by two rib shadows that we're seeing there. And in between, we have the body of the bat, which is gonna be that plural line, which is really key, the most important thing to identify when we're doing plus scanning. Absolutely, and in this case here, this is a pretty good image, but our patient, Penny, has a very thin body condition score, so we're gonna take this depth down a little bit. We're gonna take this down, it's really easy to do. You just simply uh, slide that down with our touch screen, and you can see now that we have a nicer blown up image, and when I get that, I can see that Plural line, the body of the bat, first white line below the ribs that joins the rib shadows. And now when I actually have that dirt arch loop, what am I looking for? Well, what you wanna ask yourself, do you have lung sliding, yes or no? That's gonna be a big question. And sometimes it's quite easy to see, you're gonna see that shimmer, right? Where the two pleura are sliding over each other when you're looking at that plural line. Absolutely, in this case here, I gotta say, I can see it in some parts of the image, but it's difficult. So some of the tricks we'll do, Dr. Shalhoub, I'm gonna fan the probe. So I'm actually just gonna fan the probe until that plural line becomes more grainy. And there you see, we've made it more grainy. The grainier the plural line, the easier it is for us to see the lung slide or the shimmer. Now I can see that that lung sliding is very visible. I see that shimmer very easily, Dr. Shalhoub. 100%, so grainy like your stubble right now, Dr. Boysen, absolutely. Some other tricks of the trade that we can do, we can play with the gain. Absolutely, so go ahead and demonstrate that as well. So we just simply drag our finger across, we can decrease the gain, and there you go. We see the shimmer again because we've turned down the gain. Important to think about as well when you're coming off the abdomen. So we turn the gain back up a little bit and there's a nice shimmer that we see. Again, even if I come back to perpendicular, I can see that shimmer because we've turned the gain down. So we put the gain back up and we're perpendicular, I lose that lung sliding. What are some of the other uh, things? What's one of the other things we can do, Dr. Well, one thing you can do, Dr. Boysen, is you can move that probe and set it on top of a rib. We love to call this the dead bat sign because it looks like a dead bat upside down with its wings played on either side. But really what this does is again, it changes the angle of insonation over that plural line, makes it more grainy, which makes us see that lung sliding a lot better. Look at that train track. All right, so those are the four tricks. Tell you with your depth, play with your gain, play with fanning and situate your probe over one rib as opposed to between two ribs. And that will allow you to see that lung sliding more easily. So what are the other things that we're gonna look at then, Dr. Shalhoub, before we actually go through the protocols? Let's show everybody how we find the different borders then. I love it, Dr. Boyson. Let's Boysen. take our depth out a little bit more again and turn the gain up because that usually makes it easier for us to find the borders after we've uh, assessed the lung sliding. So we'll take our depth out again to about the six centimeter mark. And there we are. And now what we're gonna do, Dr. Shalhoub, we're just gonna slide the probe straight caudal. Let's talk about that caudal border, the curtain sign first. And what are we looking for that tells us that we're there? Well, we're gonna start from that cranial border, we're gonna to go to the cauda border, and you're gonna slide the skin instead of wetting the entire dog with alcohol, and that works a lot better until you get from air-filled lung to a soft tissue transition. And it's essentially gonna look like a curtain, Dr. Boysen, opening and closing. And I just see it coming in right there. So that is my vertical edge artifact. That is the curtain sign. Literally takes about five seconds to find. And I could just heard Dr. Shalhoub said, I put alcohol on and I pull the skin with that one spot until I can see that vertical edge artifact. You see it coming in really nicely right there. Look at that beautiful curtain sign that I have there. That's the caudal border, really easy for us to find. Yeah, and we can see the stomach there on the other side and you have to be careful because if you were to gone beyond that, there could be gas in the stomach, there could even be some fake bee lines there, Dr. Boysen, and you might think you're seeing lung pathology. So that's why it's really important to take the time and identify this caudal plus border, Dr. Boysen. Absolutely, and we can identify a lot of pathology by identifying this vertical edge artifact. Lots of things that we can see with regards to pleural effusion, lung consolidation, or even pneumothorax, but we'll go through that in another session. So that's our caudal border. Let's go ahead now and we'll just put the probe on and show what that dorsal border looks like, Dr. Shalhoub. So I'll pull the fur down. We're just gonna go straight up off of lung and show you what that dorsal border looks like. So most of the time we're gonna hit, go from cranial to caudal and follow that caudal border up 
until we find that dorsal border. And what that's gonna look like is you see the plural line, you see plural line, boom, you lose it because now you're in muscle, the apexal muscles to be exact. And we can come right back down and you're at the highest point. If this patient was sternal or standing, Dr. Boysen, that would be the most dorsal highest point of your plus scanning. Absolutely. And we do that with a probe parallel. We can also turn, or perpendicular to the ribs, we can also turn the probe parallel to the ribs and see where that lung sliding disappears at those sublumbar hypaxial muscles. So a really nice place for us to do that and find that dorsal border onto the hypaxial muscles, back down to so see the pleural line. Or again, we can just turn the probe parallel and slide up until that curves, and we know we've hit the most caudal dorsal or most dorsal site. So that's our dorsal border. And then ventrally, Dr. Schlub? Yeah, so ventrally, you said we have two borders, Dr. Boys, and let's go ahead and show what they look like. And remember, your limitation here is going to be the sternum. So you won't be able to go any further than the sternum. And when I go for that ventral border, I do like to turn the probe parallel to the ribs with the marker pointed dorsally, and I'll just slide straight down between the ribs until I actually either hit the cardiac notch or I see the lung start to curl right there at that sternal border. So I can see that the lung is just starting to curl now, and that is the sternal ventral border. That's our pleural border, actually, where we see that ski jump sign where the lung is curving away from the chest wall along the sternal muscles. So it's really easy with ultrasound to find those key borders that tells you where you are and know where pathology accumulates based on patient positioning. So most of the time our patients in sternal standing, we have penny and lateral just for the sake of demonstrating the video, but you can see how easy it is to find those different borders. Get comfortable scanning for those with your ultrasound and finding those. All right, well, that was a nice introduction to plus scanning. Remember, start over lung, know your borders, and scan from border to border. That's really gonna help you identify and rule in rule out pathologies. And now we're gonna take each pathology separately.